This is another episode of Stand Up Comedy, your host and MC, celebrating 40 plus years on the fringe of show business. Stories, interviews, and comedy sets from the famous and not so famous. Here's your host and MC, Scott Edwards. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the podcast. I got some uh, great stand-up comedy for you, two of my best friends in the business. I got these sets from back in the uh, early 20s, so a little bit after they worked for me at my clubs, but uh, far enough back to make it kind of interesting and fun. And as I always say, funny is funny, and I know you'll enjoy these two comedy sets. First is a shorter set by my good friend, Milt Abel. He's out of... uh, Washington, a very funny guy, and has worked all over the country, done a fair amount of TV, and just clean, funny, and always good for a laugh. And after him, one of the best out of Seattle, Washington, Kermit Apio. He was uh, a Hawaiian comic originally. He moved to uh, the Seattle area uh, many decades ago, but he's gone on to fame and fortune in stand up comedy and a little bit longer set from him. Together, this is going to be a great bit of stand-up comedy entertainment I know you'll enjoy. All right, let's jump into it. A little bit later on, the very talented Kermit Apio. But right now, let's start off with some comedy by my good friend, Milt Abel. It's National Emblem says everything. A maple leaf, trees, shade, pastoral, peaceful. National Emblem of the United States, an eagle, a hunter, a raptor. Don't mess with the United States. We'll swoop down and rip you apart. <laughs> mess with Canada? We'll plug your gutters, eh? <laughs> From Canada, eh? You know, Canadians aren't saying A eh as much as they used to. I don't know if you've been out there recently, but they're not saying A eh like these. I'll tell you why. They're secretly meaning to get rid of this vocal habit. The meanings are called A. Hey, hey. <laughs> Do you know how Canada was named? Do you know how Canada was named? They, when they wanted their own sovereignty, England wasn't very happy about it. They said, okay, you yeah, can have your own country, but it's going to have a silly name, Constance only, and three at that, like an airport. And they had a local official with a hat, with nothing but Constance in it. And they said, now you reach in there and announce what you pull out, whatever he says you write down. That'll be the name of your silly little country, big country. So he reaches in and he goes, C, eh? N, eh? D, eh? Did you get that? That's how Canada was named. (laughs) Trying to lose weight. uh, Started a new diet. Got to give up something. Always got to give up something. I'm giving up uh, mirrors and scales. (laughs) Uh, (laughs) No, I'm telling you, you know, and, uh, well, I have a theory why we're an ovoid society. We are an ovoid society. And one of the reasons is we don't have to chase our food anymore. Thank you for just getting the concept. The, uh, well, you know, we used to burn a lot of calories getting dinner on the table. I think there should be grocery stores for dieters where food can run away if this was alive. <laughs> Little package of chicken on a railing like at a dog race. <laughs> Why really overweight people can go, well, the vegetables are stationary. <laughs> Instead of asking what's on special, anything weak or slow today? I've got, a, got a bad wheel. Sprained my ankle playing Sudoku. <laughs> Yeah, I go to the gym, go to the gym, you know, my focus, I'm getting older, I'm, uh, I'm not as flexible as I used to be, that's for darn sure. Now when I spill change in my hand, I count it before I decide to pick it up. How much, <laughs> how much is that, 17 cents? I can come back for that, there's no hurry. Get that later. No, my focus has changed, you know, uh, from going to the gym. My focus at the gym used to go for vanity, you know. I I used to go for vanity. Now I go for longevity. I've gone from keeping up appearances to just keep appearing. Uh... (laughs) 
Hey everybody, I apologize for this quick interruption, but are you curious about what it really takes to become a stand-up comic? Think it's all about just jokes and laughter? Well, think again. (laughs) Introducing 20 questions answered about being a stand-up comic. The ultimate insider's guide to working the stage of stand-up comedy. In fact, any stage. This book will help you. Now, whether you're dreaming of stepping on stage or you just love stand-up comedy, this book is packed with real-life insights, advice, and lessons from someone who's been there. From the highs of standing ovations to the struggles of late-night gigs, this book answers the questions every aspiring comic and comedy fan want to know. We even tackle stage fright in an added bonus chapter. So, if you've ever wondered what it takes to make it on stage, grab your copy of 20 Questions Answered about being a stand-up comic, now available on Amazon. And by the way, for my regular listeners, I'm planning to stop new podcast shows in 2025. Let me know what you might miss. Email me anytime at scottscomedystuff at gmail.com. It matters to me what you think, so share your thoughts. Scott's Comedy Stuff at gmail.com. Thanks for listening, and now back to our show. Let me uh, talk about uh, age just for a second. I'm taking care of both my parents. Uh, My mom is on oxygen 24 7, so she has a cannula and a a cord. I live with her because I lost the house in the divorce. I know where it is. Okay, let's go to the next one. Uh, so, so she's on oxygen 24-7. She has a, everywhere she goes, she has a cord to the base station. And, you know, I live with it. We played hide-and-go-seek once. Uh, there you are again, Mom. Found you right away. Yeah, every time, yeah. But she has Alzheimer's, so we can play over and over. And, uh, technology, you know, they're called smartphones, but anybody gets to use them. Uh, I still have a landline. I have a landline in my house so I can call my smartphone to find out where it is in the house. Unless it's on vibrate, then I need a seismologist as well. Oh, thank you over there. Thank you. That's very difficult to get seismologists as a punchline. It really is. And I think I pulled it off. You know, even more difficult to get as a punchline, the word loom. Loom, here we go. <laughs> Loom. I, uh, I'm starting to get phone solicitations on my cell phone. There used to be just the province of landlines. But now I'm getting on my cell phone. I get a call on my cell phone the other day. The other day they go, hello, is this Mark Abel? I go, no, this is Milt Abel. And he goes, well, you've won. <laughs> yeah, think about that. I got it wrong. I'm still in first place. This is... He goes, you want a brand new Jeep Grand Cherokee? I said, well, great, send it over. He goes, yeah, you want a Jeep Cherokee, a color TV, or a portable radio? Oh, give me a minute on that. Uh, I'll stick with the Jeep. He goes, yeah, you want one of these three gifts, all you have to do is come down and listen to our 90-minute lecture on the condominiums. Ever gotten a call like this before? Yeah, so now I know what's up. So I go, you know what, you can keep the Jeep. And now I can tell he's losing me. So he goes, hey, wait a minute now. Didn't you once fill out an entry form at a shopping mall or a movie theater over the past couple years? That's what he asked. Pretty much saying, have you been outside and signed your name? You're involved. You know, so, so now I just want to get rid of him. So I say, you know what? I never freak a place like that. I'm Amish. I shouldn't be on the phone right now. <laughs> of course, my fear is now get a letter saying you want a buggy or a loom. <laughs> <laughs> that was the very funny Milt Abel. Man, he has a great way of turning everyday stuff into funny, funny material. That was taken in the early 20s from a trip up in Canada, as you might have picked up on. And uh, he had a great little tour. He's done a lot of comedy and TV sense. Keep an eye out for him. But one of the regulars on this podcast, Milt Abel. All right, let's jump into the headliner for this show. Originally out of Hawaii, he now hails out of the Seattle, Washington area. But again, 
again, a lot of TV, cruise ships, working clubs from coast to coast, and tours with celebrity entertainers on a regular basis. About eight minutes into a set, he's doing something for a cassette tape with his little finger. Uh, Anybody over 40 knows what we're talking about, but I wanted to explain that he's twisting his little finger in the air and hopefully uh, that'll make sense. But it's a visual, so I wanted to explain it. Uh, What a pain in the butt, huh? All right, let's just jump into some comedy. Ladies and gentlemen, they're very funny. Kermit Apio. I don't blame my parents. I wasn't named after the frog, because uh, that would have been mean, wouldn't it? <laughs> well, it's time to smell the love, I guess. It was too hard to smell. <laughs> I was named after a football player. That is true. My mom went into labor on a Sunday morning. My dad is watching football. There's a linebacker over the Miami Dolphins named Kermit Johnson, who had a really good game. That day. <laughs> well, lucky me, no? I tell you what, I'm so glad he wasn't watching the Chicago Bears and Dick Butkus, because uh, I'm Butkus Abio. Ah, go ahead and beat me up now. No, I don't need lunch money. I'm Butkus. And that's where my comedy career started. I love my job. It's a great job, but I've been doing it a long time. So it kind of scares me because you know what I realize? This is my job skill. (laughs) If I ever have to do a job interview, it will not go well. I won't know what to say, just um, how about a big round of applause for the other applicants? Woo! (laughs) Qualifications? Uh, I'm lazy and sarcastic, what do you got? (laughs) Eight hours in a row? (laughs) That's like a week and a half for me. I work an hour a day. When I have a bad day at work, it's it's bad for an hour. (laughs) I got 23 to get over it, you know. That was a bad show. I think I'll hit the snooze alarm 247 times. My buddy said, well, you're self-employed. That's cool. I don't know. Self-employed and in debt doesn't mean all that much. All that means is the company picnic sucks. But I was employee of the year again, though. That was awesome. I know, that's two out of three years. That's awesome. (laughs) You guys are nice. What else can I tell you? I'm 49, turned 49 recently. And now... Oh, thank you, two people. Uh, that's exactly right. That's the exact two people just went, whoop, that's all that de- deserves. Truth is. You don't, you don't really cheer on 49. It's not, you know, not even your own. Like, you don't wake up on your 49th birthday. Just, Yay! Ooh, this bump is new. Awesome! <laughs> Don't get me wrong, you're happy to get to a birthday in your 40s, you're just not going nuts over it. Because really, all it means is that you have been around kind of a long time. You know, and I, I got to think about this. I was in school so long ago, I remember making ashtrays in art class. Remember that, anybody? Yeah, youngsters, that's what we did. We made ashtrays in school. Could you imagine suggesting that little idea today? <laughs> that teacher would be on the ground with a PTA mom's foot in his hand. We're on lockdown, we're on lockdown. <laughs> Sarah, get my iPad. We need to make a Facebook group now. <laughs> we made ashtrays in school. You had to use your nine-year-old finger to make a cigarette wedge. That was weird. <laughs> 
I'm going to put glitter on it. We made addiction cute. That's what we were doing. All right, kids, get your welder's mask. We're making shot glasses for mommy. Let's do this. Oh, and if you haven't finished your macaroni bombs, get them done. Let's go. It's almost Christmas time in the 70s, and that's how we roll. Anytime someone tells me 40 is old, you know what I do? I will tell you what I do. I take my Walkman out of my members-only jacket, and I don't listen to them. That's what I do. <laughs> All right, once again, for those of you under 40, the Walkman was a musical listening device. Kind of like the iPod, only steam-powered, really. <laughs> It's amazing how far we've come in technology, just in our lifetime, amazing. I'm watching a movie with my kids, okay, a little bit of an older movie, all of a sudden my son goes, why is the phone on the wall? Just put me on a scooter and point me to a home, I'm done. It's V-neck sweater time for me, I'm old. That makes you feel so old, and you've got to explain to a kid, yeah, if you want to talk to somebody, you have to stand near the wall. Sure, the rich kids have the long cord, they could get to the fridge, you know. But... When you look at a kid's face, when you tell them that, you might as well scratch it in hieroglyphics. <laughs> here's phone, here's wall, then we hit buffalo on head and make feast. <laughs> It's a whole different world, man. Technology has changed the way we look at our lives. Everything is instant, everything is now, and it has to be. Hey, anybody remember when I don't know was a perfectly good answer to a question? Remember that? Hey, who was that guy? He was in that movie with Stallone. Who's that guy? I don't know. Huh, me neither. Let's move on with our lives. Right? Life was simpler then. You try and do that now. Who's that guy in that movie? I don't know. Why is your phone dead? Idiot. Are you on 3G? Hashtag loser. <laughs> you. Everything is instant. You want to listen to a song? It's on your phone. Your phone is wherever you are. Seconds later, there's a song. Amazing. Anybody remember trying to find a song on a cassette? Remember those days? Bring a book and a lunch. It's an afternoon finding that thing. Stop. Rewind. Stop, play, that's not it. Stop, rewind. Oh, it's on the other side. Stop, eject, turn over, close. I should shave again. Remember trying to reel up the beginning part? <laughs> There's my over 40s. There they are. <laughs> They're getting this. This is the over 40 gang sign right here. <laughs> Don't make me bust out my pencil, yo. By the way, if you're under 30, I don't have time to explain, which is... <laughs> I love watching people under 30 watch me do that. I don't understand what's happening. Is that a flash drive? This guy is stupid. <laughs> you know, they say that 40 is the new 30. But apparently that's if you work out. I guess 220 is not the new 180, you know. Although 930 is the new midnight. I know that much. Oh, my over 40s love that joke. Just, yeah, three, exhausted. <laughs> but that's what I love about the 40s, that you can laugh at a joke like that in public and have no problem with it. The 40s, you make an amazing transition where you accept your life, you buy into your own reality. And it's okay. You don't run from it, you don't pretend, you don't hide. You know what, public? I'm tired. Deal with this. <laughs> Yeah, dress socks and cargo shorts, boom, so what? Yes, I'm wearing a visor, hats are too much for me now. Who needs all that drama?
I love the 40s. You accept reality and life gets easier. In your 20s, I'm going to change the world. In your 30s, oh, I'm going to change my community. In your 40s, what? oh, uh, I might leave the house. Oh, wait, I still have root beer and string cheese. Not today. But tomorrow, good sweatpants, we're doing this. That's what I learned. In your 40s, you make an amazing transition. And here's something I learned about it. If you're not ready to make that transition, your body will make it for you. I hurt my back a couple years ago. Nothing major, I just tweaked my back. But you know how I tweaked my back? Here it is, get ready. Sleeping, that's what I did wrong. At this point, lying down is an extreme sport for this. I am not kidding, going from here, that's about that. That's it. That's when my body goes, woo, slowing down, LeBron, take it easy. I am one good sneeze or my spleen exploding. That is my life life. Here's one. I hurt my knee washing dishes. I didn't hit my knee. I didn't fall on my knee. I was washing dishes and went from perfectly fine to oh. That's it. That's the whole story, folks. Take that story to the bars. Oh, really? You crushed your knee in a motorcycle accident? Well, let me tell you something. I got a ceramic dish that's a little too heavy. Uh, me and you, brother, up top. Oh, not so hard. I got a wonky shoulder over here. Slow down. <laughs> that was Kermit Appeal live on stage back in 2020. Man, what a funny guy. He's a great friend and always brings the comedy to the audience. And I just thought it was so funny how he referenced uh, wall phones and cassettes. But uh, hopefully you enjoyed it and found it as funny as I did. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that was our comedy show for this week. Uh, we want to thank Milt Abel and Kermit Appeal, two really funny guys, for sharing a little bit of their comedy with us. We'll be back next week with one of our comedy interviews. Thanks for listening. Be sure to tell your family and friends. Bye. We hope you enjoyed this episode of Stand Up Comedy, your host and MC. For information on the show, merchandise, and our sponsors, or to send comments to Scott, visit our website at www.standupyourhostandmc.com. Look for more episodes soon and enjoy the world of stand-up comedy. Visit a comedy showroom near you.